Welcome back. I hope everyone had a great spring break and you're ready to dive in and finish up the semester with a bang. This week we're going to be finishing up module three by looking at uh, consumer culture. Now when we think about culture, oftentimes there are things that we look at that we see differences between us and another culture and oftentimes the problems that arise are not due to the fact that we have different cultures but that we don't understand that we have different cultures. For example, if we think about a different culture, oftentimes we see how, that people dress differently, have a different language, listen to different types of music, have different modes of transportation, whatever it's going to be. But one of the things that marketers have to take into consideration is the aspect of how color is different and viewed in different cultures. For example, some colors are consi considered neutral in Western cultures, but they might carry some different connotation in another culture. Something, a bit, something well, some color may be very positive in one area, but very negative in another area. So for example, uh, <clears throat> think about some of the differences that are out there with colors. So if we think about, for example, um, in the US or in the Western cultures, White is what we consider the bridal culture. However, red is the bridal color for China. Red signifies joys in parts of Asia, but it symbolizes mourning in parts of Africa. Black represents death in Western cultures, but white is the color of death in India and China. It, the list goes on and on. So we have to understand that there are differences and we need to be aware of those differences, marketers especially. So there are differences that we have to understand across the world. So let's look at a couple. Uh, for example, um, seeing kids drinking beer or wine in a restaurant, you would never see that in the US because it's illegal. But in many parts of Europe, it's highly acceptable. You see it all the time. So again, these are differences that people have to understand. Here in the US, getting together with the uh, supervisors and employees, getting together, so socializing with, with each other, totally acceptable. But in many parts of the, the world, in other countries, it's not acceptable because of the power distances. We'll talk about those things uh, a little bit later, especially power distance, but it is unacceptable in other parts of the world. And think about kissing. For us here in the US, the meaning is purely something that's, you know, your family, you kissed your Aunt Marge, or you kiss your, you know, your romantic interest, whatever it's going to be. But in other parts of the world, males kissing each other, females kissing each other, kissing friends, it's highly acceptable. We just have to understand it. Now within each culture, there are certain norms that we follow, and part of the time we learn those norms from different sources. But a cultural norm is a rule that specifies the appropriate behavior that we're supposed to follow in any type of given situation. But if we don't follow it, this is a cultural sanction. And these are the kind of penalties that are associated with performing some type of uh, being inconsistent with cultural behavior. I mean, think about inside your family and being together with, you know, maybe some of the older uh, generation, your grandparents or uh, older aunts and uncles, and doing something that's not acceptable. What kind of, what kind of um, look do you get? What kind of action do they take? Um, if you don't follow the norms, they're generally going to come down with some type of sanction, whether it's going to be that look uh, that your Aunt Marge gives you, or um, maybe you get a rebuttal with uh, um, getting pinched. So you just never know. But we have to understand that we gain insight through what our culture is and how we're spoke to, supposed to act through various factors. But these factors that we talk about basically differ among cultures. For example, think about a hotel, hotel clerk. In the US, we expect them to speak English and basically take care of customers. But in Europe, they need to speak multiple languages. That's the expectation. That is what is required. And they also need to be able to adjust to each customer that comes in. Retail employees here in the US, 
We want to treat customers promptly, courteously, and make them a priority. But in Russia, customers aren't treated prop promptly or courteously. The worker is basically the priority that's given over customers. Now what about college students? Here in the US, we expect you to be attentive in class. Do the work that we assign you when it's due, buy the textbook, and don't eat in class. But in Europe, talking with your classmates during class is more acceptable. The syllabus is kind of more of a suggestion, and eating in class, I mean full meals, is sometimes common. And finally, look at motorcycle drivers. Here, you know, we, we when people ride motorcycles, they're, you know, they dress down and they kind of follow the same rules as we do with driving an automobile. But in Italy, you're generally you're dressed up. Now you're riding a Vespa generally, not a motorcycle, but same thing to a degree. And you're, because you're often going to the office, you're dressed up in your, you know, what you're wearing for that day. And you, it, general rules of the road, they're often ignored. You don't even have to use traffic lights sometimes, it seems. So we have different roles, we have different expectations, and being able to find those is a critical factor. But part of it is also, what is acceptable? What is it that we can do oftentimes from a cultural perspective to be able to get actions that we want taken care of? For example, one of the biggest problems that medicine faces is the lack of organ donors. And here we can see the consent rate by country uh, based on Europe. And look at the differences that have been uh, put into place basically by governments. And the difference is basically you opt in. You have to tell them, yes, I want to be an organ donor like we do here in the U.S. Or you have to opt out and say, yeah, I don't want to do that. For those countries that opt out, look at the uh, consent rate. It's incredibly high. But where you have to opt in, it's kind of low. It's kind of low here in the U.S. as well. Again, part of this is understanding, one, we have cultural aspects, but how do we adjust those cultural aspects uh, for the betterment of society? So what determines a culture? Well, if we look at the norms and value systems of a culture, they're generated or developed by you know, the established religion in a particular area, the political philosophy, the philosophy of our economic system, our educational system, language, of course, but there's also the aspect of our social structure and how things are put together. Now, in our next segment of this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit more about these different elements and bring in some of the international differences between various cultures and looking at how they're created and cost.